All right, this is your uh, review for your Chapter 7 test tomorrow. All right, this is our review. All right, so um, this vocabulary section, relation, pairs inputs with outputs, function, pairs each input with exactly one output, function rule, every one of these is on your test tomorrow. Okay, every one of these terms and definitions. So each one is very important. It's going to be more like a multiple choice type of scenario. All right, it'll be like multiple choice. Okay, so let's see. That counts as one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, about um, five times four. About 20 points of your test tomorrow is just vocab. All right, so this is about 20 points, guys. There's only 100 points on your test. Hey, you could probably write that in. That's about 20 points of your test tomorrow is some of that information right there. All right, so there's our vocabulary. Um, next is listing ordered pairs and telling whether or not it's a function. Okay, listing ordered pairs and telling whether or not it's a function. Um, this is eight points of your test tomorrow. All right, being able to do this. Listing ordered pairs and is it a function, yes or no? Okay, we don't have to do the relate the output to the input. We didn't cover that, so I won't count that question on your test tomorrow. Um, is it a function? All right, so let's list the ordered pairs. I guess I don't have it. All right, um, let's list the ordered pairs, guys. Let's say them together. Uh, for the first one, negative 3, 5, negative 2, 6, 1, 7, and 0, 7. Is it a function? Yes, it's a function. Uh, each input has one output. All right, let's say our ordered pairs on the next one. Um, one, four, two, three, three, five, three, six, four, six, and five, seven. Um, okay, and um, all right, so is it a function? No. It is not, and which one repeated? Three, five, and three, six. Three, five, and three, six. Okay, so just make sure you identify. No, it's not a function because of the order pairs three, five, and three, six. Repeat the inputs. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's part of it. Then we have function rules. Function rules will make up eight points of your test tomorrow. Function rules make up eight points of your test tomorrow. Okay, the output is nine more than three times the input. Can anybody give me that equation? What would that equation be? Anybody tell me? Output is nine more than three times the input. Three X plus nine. Yep, Y equals three X plus nine. Now, Another option, because this is multiple choice, this question, all right, I could say y equals 9 plus 3x. Is that the same thing? No. No, it's not. The order matters, okay? So it needs to be, all these function rules will be written in slope-intercept form, the y equals mx plus b. x has to come first, then the number. All right, so that would be wrong. What about output is the square of the input? Anybody have that one? Addison? Uh, y equals x squared. Y equals x squared. Okay. All right. And then, okay, so that's eight points for function rules. All right. Now, this is kind of a, a pretty big concession here. Look how many points I give you for these on your test for your substitutions. 
12 points on your test tomorrow. Literally just plugging them in. All right, now, in addition to those 12 points, we talk about the fact that X is what kind of variable? All right, I'm gonna ask you this again at the end of class. Is it an independent variable or a dependent variable? X, do you guys remember what we said? X is independent because I can assign it any value I want. All right, so they gave it a value of three. I could have given it a value of five. It doesn't matter, okay? So an independent variable. Then when I plug it in and y equals six minus two and y equals four, I call y which variable? Y is the opposite of independent dependent variable because the value of y depends on the value I choose for x. So now this is no longer a 12 point section, it's actually a 20 point section. Making the substitutions and then I'm going to ask you a question along the lines of is x the independent variable or the dependent variable, and you would say X is what? The independent, because I can assign it any value I want. Y is the class dependent, because it's dependent on the value I give for X. So this is 20 points of your test grade, is making the substitutions and telling me is X or Y the independent variable, okay? All right, so lots of points there on that one. Uh, graphing, you have one of these on your, no, I'm sorry, you have two, okay? So this is eight points on your test tomorrow. There's 100 points total, okay, and all these add up. Y equals 3X plus one. Where does your first point go on this graph? Someone raise your hand and tell me. I know you know. Y equals 3X plus 1. Juvenette. It goes to a Y value of 1 because 1 is the Y intercept. That number tells me where the line crosses the Y axis. Uh, Maddox, where do I get from there? Up 3 over 3. Up 3 over 1. 1. Very good. And up three over one, plot your point and draw your line. All the way through with arrows on both ends. Don't stop it, okay? Keep going all the way through. All right, and that's how we graph it. It's two questions on your test. Okay, now this is another big one, okay? These are not connected, all right? So I have a table. You will have... Technically, you're going to have three problems where you have to write a function from the table. Then you will have three problems where you have to write a function from the graph. Okay? So that means three problems times four points. That means that this is 24 points total. Six questions on your test. Writing functions. That's one-fourth of your test grade. Okay, 24 points of your test. So let's take this table, all right? Again, you're going to have three questions like this, and let's write the function represented by the values in the table. All right, go ahead and do that. All right, so I pulled out the first two ordered pairs, negative 4, 8, and negative 2, 4. If you pulled out different ordered pairs, you still should have got the same slope, okay? So did you go 4 minus 8 over negative 2 minus negative 4? Okay, then you plus the double negative, negative two is your slope. Okay, can anybody now write the function? Y equals what? Y equals what, Darcy? Negative two X plus zero. Now technically you don't even have to write the plus zero. Okay, this is not where you describe the pattern. Okay, as X is increasing by two, Y decreases by four, that's not where you're writing the pattern. I had some people get confused on that and they wrote a pattern instead of the actual function, the actual equation. 
okay? We're looking for the actual equation here. Now, look at the graph. Go ahead and write the function if you haven't already. Okay? Anybody have that one? Trey, do you have that one? Very good. 3 over 2x plus 2. Where did he get the plus 2 from? Where did that come from? Okay. That's where the line crosses the y-axis, okay? So I had some people on this problem say, well, Miss Kinder, it's crossing like between the negative 1 and negative 2. Well, what mistake were they making? Is that the y-axis? Is this the y-axis right here? No, okay? So they were looking on the wrong axis. The y-axis, it crosses at a value of 2. <coughs> All right, and that would be my answer. Okay, so writing linear functions. Um, <clears throat> now, we had modeling real life question. Um, is the price of a subway ticket a function of the zone number? Meaning, does every input have one output? What do you think? Yes. Yes. Now, describe the relationship. Now, this is where you would look for a pattern. What is the relationship between price and zone number? What do you see? What's the relationship, guys? <clears throat> what happens to the price? It increases by $2. Yeah. The price increases by $2 for each zone that it passes through. I said per zone. All right, now this next section is a big one, and this is where um, we had a lot of mistakes on the quiz with the chirps and the temperature, the, the little cricket chirping, okay? So let's see if we can clear this up some. All right, now, on the linear function, the first thing you're going to have to do on your test is you're going to need to, to write a function, okay? What two pieces of information do you need to write a function? Slope, y-intercept. All right, did everybody do that on your review sheet? Okay, so I pulled out 0, 4, and 1, 6, and I found my slope. What did you get for slope? Did y'all get 2 over 1? Yes. 2? Okay, so someone raise your hand and tell me the function. Isabel? No, no, no. On, on this problem, on your review sheet. Is it on your review sheet or no? Am I? Did I do the wrong one? Oh, it was fluid analysis. Okay, let's just look up here. Okay? So, y equals 2x, what? 4. Plus 4 because it's paired with 0. That's so weird. Okay. I think maybe fluid ounces is on the next slide. Okay, so to interpret the slope, well, this is good. It's just going to give us some extra practice. I don't know why this is in my slide because you're right. It's not on your review sheet, but that's okay. All right, so 2x plus 4. So what it's saying is for every, where did the 6 minus 4 come from? Which category up there in the table did the 6 minus 4 come from? Do you see that here, up here in the table? Revenue. Revenue. So that means that this 2 stands for revenue, okay? Where did the 1 minus 0 come from? Advertising. So that means that the 1 stands for advertising, all right? So then it would be for every $2 million in revenue, the company spends a $1 million in advertising. Do you see how we put that together, okay? Uh, now, on the y-intercept, could anybody put that into a sentence? The y-intercept is a little easier, in my opinion. Just put it into a sentence. Name the categories. Um, Addison? Um, for, every, for every time you like, advertise, you don't advertise, you earn $4 million in revenue. Okay, so when there's no <laughs> advertising, so she, she got that part of it. She said when there's no advertising, you would expect to earn about $4 million. Hey, if $4 million keeps you in business, then don't advertise. But what if $4 million revenue makes the company bankrupt? Do they have any choice? They have to advertise, okay? So it's all about that slope and y-intercept interpretation. 
All right, now on your review sheet, which I guess I just put the wrong one up here on the slide. On the review sheet, it was fluid ounces. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to another page. On the review sheet, it was fluid ounces and cost. All right, so did you pull out two ordered pairs from the table zero, zero, and eight, and half, one half, 0 0.5? Did you guys do this? Okay, so then 0 0.5 minus zero over eight minus zero. This gives me some kind of a rate, 0 0.5 over eight, okay? Did you write the function? Can anybody raise their hand and tell me what the function is? What's the linear function? Y equals, Kyla? 0 0.5 over 8x. Yep, 0 0.5 over 8x. Okay, so here's my function. Now I need my slope interpretation. So go back to the table. Where did these numbers come from? What was the category? Go back to the table. What was the category? Um, cost. cost. The category was cost, and where did these numbers come from? Ounces. Okay, so put it into a sentence. It will cost how much money? 50 cents per 8 ounces. That's the sentence that you would write. It will cost 50 cents per 8 ounces. You're establishing a rate. Okay, now the y intercept. Well, which ordered pair told you the y intercept? On your review sheets. Which ordered pair told you the y-intercept? Zero. I even have it listed right here. So put that into a sentence. What did the x value stand for? What, what, what did it stand for? X stood for what? Ounces. So when you buy, how many ounces? Zero ounces. How much money will it cost you? Zero. Zero. That's a proportional relationship. When x is zero, y is zero. When you spend or when you buy nothing, you pay nothing, okay? Those are your interpretations. So I'm going to ask you all three of those questions on your test tomorrow. So that would be a 12-point section right there, okay? Um, let's see. That pretty much covers everything on your test tomorrow, okay? So if you understand that, you should be ready. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll, we will go over C. Okay, so there was one more question. This additional question is not on your test, but it was on your review sheet. How much would it cost? If it's 50 cents per 8 ounces, how much would it cost to purchase 32 ounces of coffee? How much would it cost, guys? $2. $2, because 8 times 4 is 32, so 0 0.5 times 4 is $2. So that would be the answer to C on the review sheet. Okay, so there's a few more things on the review sheet we'll go over, um, but overall we have covered and hit on every section that would be on your um, test tomorrow, so we are good there.